Hi there, it's Ben Housel here, and in this class we're going to have a look at how we make this stop motion animation title. So essentially what we've done is we've taken a series of still images um, with a digital camera, and we'll have a look at those in a little bit, and then we've stitched them together um, into this stop motion. And we've added a couple of effects, like the shape mask effect and the projector effect, to, to mask out our animation. But essentially what we're going to be doing here is looking at how we pull in a series of images and then stitch them together as a stop motion title animation. So let's dive in and have a look at how we set this up. So the first thing we're going to do here is start with a brand new project in Final Cut Pro 10. So I'm going to close this library that we already have open um, so that we start from scratch and run through all the steps that you need to know in order to do this. So we'll go to File, New and Library and create a brand new library. And we'll call this stop motion type demo. Hit save. And now we're gonna import the images. Now, and one question I get asked a lot is how do you import images at one frame rather than the 10 seconds that's the default in Final Cut Pro 10? And you would do this for things like stop motion, for time lapses, any image sequence that you've exported that you wanna turn into an animation in Final Cut Pro 10. And the answer is I don't. I normally just set that frame rate on the timeline because it's so easy to do by setting the duration. So we've gotta import by dragging the images from the desktop. So I'm gonna to jump to my finder window here. And in here we have this image sequence of the 45 or so images that we're gonna be using. So if you're running this around 30 frames a second, this will work out to a one and a half second animation, which is reasonably decent. And so these images that we're using are basically shot from a handheld camera. And we're gonna have a look at how we stabilize this as well in Final Cut Pro 10. And so essentially we've got a series of these images of the type animated. Now, the way I like to do these animations when I'm getting the type to draw itself onto the screen is to do it in reverse. So I set the type up with it as I want it to look in the final frame. Um, and then essentially I'll reverse this when I get into Final Cut Pro 10. So what I'm doing at frame by frame here is just running through each frame, moving the letters a little bit, and then taking a photo and trying to frame it roughly in the same shot so that I have everything I need in the frames. You can see here as we're moving, the type is kind of forming this swell, which we'll use in reverse when we put this together in Final Cut Pro 10. So let's go ahead and drag these into Final Cut Pro. So we're gonna click on the first image, hold down Shift, click on the last image, or you can use Command and A to select all, and then we're gonna drag these across to Final Cut Pro 10. So these are gonna import now, and the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is create a new project timeline. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a custom size timeline. So I'm gonna create a new project, and the reason for doing this is so that we keep the quality of the images. So I'm going to set my resolution up here as custom. Now before you do this, you might see just this window in Final Cut Pro. So we need to go to Use Custom Settings and then change where it says 1080p or something else to the custom settings. And we're going to change it to 5184 by 346 by 3456. And we're going to get it to run at 29.97 frames per second um, because that's what most of my footage is shot in so I like to keep things at the, the same frame rate and um, we'll use Apple ProRes um, the audio doesn't matter and so once we've got this we'll title this as part one animation so here in this sequence and um, we're going to pull down all these frames so if I click on the first clip here so these are all in order at the moment I'm going to scroll down all the way down to the bottom and hold down shift and select them all and just make sure that these are all in order. And now we can drag this down to the timeline. Now at the moment, each of these clips is 10 seconds long, which is not what we want. So these are all still selected, but if you don't still have them selected, you can just do um, command and A or edit select all, and that will select everything on the timeline. And now because we only have these on the timeline, we can change the duration of them all in one go. So I'm gonna hold down Control and tap D and then type in one, which is gonna change each frame to one frame long and then hit enter. And you'll see my animation has now gone from, I guess what was around 450 seconds long to 45 frames long or one second and 15 frames. So you can see here we have the animation not in the direction we want it, so before we reverse this, so it plays back in the direction we want, we're actually gonna export out this movie. Um, and the reason for doing this is that I wanna apply some image stabilization to the video. And you can't apply image stabilization to individual still frames. So essentially what we're gonna do now is go to the top right here, and we're gonna export this out as a master file. 
we can see the resolution here, the frame rate is good. Um, in the settings, we're going to export out Apple ProRes. So it's the source resolution and the source video codec. And we can hit next. And we'll type in export here. So once that's done, um, we're going to go ahead and re-import that video. So I'm going to go to File, New Project. And we'll call this Part 2 Animation. So it's the second part of what we're doing. This time, we're going to have a 1080p timeline, 1920 by 1080, 29.97 frames per second. And then we're going to click OK. I'm going to jump to my desktop again. And now I have this part one export, which we can see is the video playing back. So I just tap the space bar there to see a little preview of it. And we can drag that straight onto our new timeline. Okay, and if I do Shift and Z, we can see the whole timeline. So essentially here what we have is an unstabilized version of that video footage. Okay. Now with this footage, at the moment, if we keep it highlighted on the timeline, if we scroll down, it's set to fit to the video that we're working on. So I'm going to change this to none, so it goes to fill that frame, because I want to use the scale manually up here. So I'm going to scale this down because I want to use the scale manually up here. So I'm going to scale this down and I'm just going to come back to the first frame so I can see my final frame. Then I'm going to come with my video selected to the inspector and check stabilization. So one word of warning about stabilizing the 5K footage is that it might lock up your computer a little bit. So as you're working, you may want to choose between setting up your initial project at 1920 by 1080 um, first of all and see if you get the quality you need or if you want a higher quality that you can zoom into that you can have a bit more control over then work with the full resolution images um, but I found that even for this one and a half second clip it did challenge my computer and I had to quit out a few other applications as I was working so just be aware of that so now that we have our video stabilized we can come in here um, and actually the the stabilization um, it's still a little shaky so I'm gonna ramp these right up and just see if we get a little better result from the stabilization so so I've experimented a little bit with the, the amount of smoothing and um, I'm giving this and I've dialed it up to around uh, 50 here and um, to get the best uh, smoothing possible I did found on the previous version on this that the inertia cam worked a little better um, but you can experiment with that and see the best results that you get so you can see now that this is playing and we're getting a nice kind of smooth uh, flow and that little bit of jerkiness is going to kind of help us out as we go through so essentially we've got this nice kind of smooth flow um, of animation and this is where we're going to begin to add um, some of the effects that we saw in the initial video so the first thing we're going to do here um, is create a freeze frame so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do here is add a, a mask which is going to mask out um, the edge of this cardboard box that we still have I'm just going to grab the position tool here just so I can move this up and center it a little better so I'm looking at the final frame here um, and actually what we'll do now is reverse it so I'm going to reverse the clip speed so now we get this lettering and it's going to draw itself on and you can really start to see how that works well and then when it's finished we're going to hold on this last frame of that animation we'll go in now um, to our effects and we're going to jump in to our masks and we're going to add on a shape masks here and in the shape mask we've got some options for setting its location so if we go down to the transforms here in the shape mask and also the scale we can scale down this effect and I'm just going to slide across here so I can see this last frame because this is really where I want to frame this so we're going to change the Y position a little bit and also the X position. And basically we're looking to have that centered in there. And then we can play around with the location of our final video um, in here. So I just hit Shift and Z on the timeline so I can quickly pull myself back to the beginning. So now we have a nice feather at the edge there, which is hiding the fact that we've got some of that cardboard box and shadow and actually we just need to nudge this a little bit to dodge that shadow at the end. So there we have it. We have the animation working quite nicely. We can come in and add some other um, effects as well. So we've got some stylized effects. Um, so things like bad TV might work. I'm gonna pop the projector effect on 
so we get this kind of nice retro feel to it and actually I'm going to take the projector effect off of this first of all and because what I'm going to do is just come to my last frame and then use the back arrow just to come to the frame before my last frame and then I'm going to hold down the alt key and tap F and to give me a freeze frame so now you can see my animation will play through and then hold on the last video hack frame and then we'll add now the projector which will give that text as it's still a little bit of animation so we'll get this effect and it holds nicely on that final frame if you're not sure about using the freeze frame option shortcut then just come up to edit and the add freeze frame option is just there you need to do it on the last frame of your video so you need to go to the end of your video and then just go back one frame to add that freeze frame there so now you can see this is what we finished up with which looks quite nice and Hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can create a stop motion title in Final Cut Pro 10. Um, I did this really simply and quite quickly with a DSLR shooting onto this piece of cardboard and I might do things differently if I did this in the future but there's definitely a lot of fun you can have with this technique as well. So thanks for watching this tutorial and if you have any questions then drop me a message below and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.